Hey guys, I'm going to be attempting to install an April Air 500 whole home humidifier in my house. And I'm going to hopefully show you along the way the steps that I take to do it. So here's the uh, unit just to start off. Um, I purchased the automatic version, only later to realize that I'm going to try to control it with my Nest thermostat. So I don't actually need this anymore. Um, so I'll show you right here. Here's the Nest. This is what I'm going to use to control the humidifier. So first things first. This is where I'm going to be installing it. I just peeled off some tape uh, that the previous homeowners had up here, and it looks like there was something cut out previously. Um, so I'm gonna need to figure out what to do about that. Uh, this is ductboard, so it's not as easy an installation as if you had full rigid duct up here, but I've done some research and it seems like it's still doable. But the goal is to mount the April Air right here, um, take some flexible duct and run it around, uh, and land the bypass over here on the supply. Or, I always get that confused. Supply, return, I don't, I don't even know. The cold air. <laughs> the cold air side. Alright, so, first things first, I'm gonna... Gotta make sure that this template will cover that hole. Because that's really what I'm worried about. It looks like it does. Which is perfect. Because, might have a little issue. Well, no, that should probably work out. The, the worry with that is, if the hole is too big... This, this template represents the size of what's gonna go into the, the warm air supply. Um, so if the circle was too big that these previous owners had cut out, that wouldn't fly, but it looks like it's going to be okay. So what I'm going to do is get this on here, tape it up, and mark it off. So I hung the template up there, grabbed a level, made sure it was level, taped it, and used a Sharpie to mark the perimeter. So as I said earlier, I'm installing the bypass back over here. It's kind of a tight spot, but it's really all I have to work with, unless I want to go crazy, but this running it lower eats up into our space. And it would prevent me from removing the uh, face of the furnace, so or this, you know, face plate. So really, what I'm left to do is run it just straight over. Um, so to tap into this circular duct over here, because most of the videos I see where people install the April Air, they've got a standard rectangular duct. I've got this tubular duct, so it's not as easy to tap into. So what I had to get was a saddle T. I guess that's what you would call it. I was able to order this uh, from Home Depot's website, but I'm sure you could get it anywhere. There are a few versions of this, but this was the one I liked the most, just because it took up the least space. It's got a gasket over here. Um, so what I'm going to do is place this over here where I want to install it, and uh, hold it up there and mark it off with Sharpie so I know where to cut. Okay, you can see where I made my outline. That's where I'll be cutting. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I pulled this off. It looks like, I'm pretty sure the previous owners had a humidifier installed as well. Because this looks like a little spot where your sensor would go. But since I'm going to be using the Nest, I don't really need that. So there's something else I gotta do first before I can mount the April Air on my ductboard. And that is create some sort of support. Because the ductboard doesn't really work well with supporting this thing. Because when you put through, screws through these holes, it doesn't really have anything to hang on to because that ductboard is kind of just like a fibrous material. So what I did instead is I took a scrap piece of sheet metal and I bent them into little U's. Um, about 10 inches long maybe, I don't know. Yeah, roughly 10 inches long. And I used my vise to bend these into this U shape. It's not the prettiest thing, but I definitely think it'll work. Um, so I've got two of them and I've got markings on them where I'm going to drill my holes. And I'll drill it through both sides. Got the hole cut. Gone ahead and taped off these edges to prevent uh, as much of the fiber board from being exposed as possible. So, how this is going to work... I'm going to take these little homemade brackets. There's the bottom one. And I drilled these out. I lined them up with the April Air, so hopefully this lines up once I mount the unit in there. Side to side, it looks like I did pretty well. Uh, top to bottom, not so much. So I'm going to need to cut a little more out, lower this thing down a little bit. So I've got the April layer <coughs> wedged in there. It's not melted yet. Just about to do that. It's level. So now I need to secure frame to my duct. I got these number eight two-inch screws from the hardware store. You probably don't need two inch, but I originally bought one inch and I realized it was not long enough, so I just wanted to be on the safe side. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw those in. I've got a quarter inch head. I'm just gonna drive it with this screwdriver. So I got it all mounted up. I used some of this good aluminum tape to create a nice seal between the April Air frame and the fiberboard over here. So that seals it up. One thing to note, if you're doing this on fiberboard like I did, um, 
this was a real pain in the ass, uh, getting these through, because it didn't line up with the hole on the other side very well. Since I was sort of just bending that metal on my own with a vice, I need to tap into my hot water line. Um, my water heater's out in the garage, so you can see I'm punching a hole through the wall. I've got my quarter-inch copper pipe right there. I'm going to tap in over here. Use my cutters to cut in here. Uh, make a connection. I'll show you where it's coming in. So what I'm going to do now is cut in here. Um, not using the saddle valve that was provided. Here, those are typically pretty unreliable, tend to leak. So what I got is one of these shark bite T connectors. It's pretty easy to use. I've used this shark bite stuff before over here. And it was incredibly easy. Just got my T valve put in. So I'm gonna connect this up. This is a pretty nice little T if you've ever seen them. The, uh, the shark bite's really easy to do for anyone who doesn't know how to do plumbing, kind of like myself. Um, and you can open it. Obviously I have the water shut off, so it's not gushing out right now. But, so, during normal operation, when this is connected, that's how you have it, and that's how you can cut it off. So you can service the dehumidifier, I'm sorry, the humidifier, without cutting off your hot water to the rest of the house. And this thing can be rotated in service, and that's pretty nice, too. I just made my hot water connection right here, the compression, compression connection. Um, I decided to do this before I did the bypass, because I think it'll be easier to get that out of the way. So I've got that over here, and I'm going to run it up, the very top, over the unit. And connected to the compression lug over here. Got my quarter inch copper pipe connected. It's not the most pretty, because I'm not an expert, but I would say it would work. It's going out to my disconnect over there. All right, awesome. <clears throat> so now that that's done, I think I'm going to do the bypass now. As I showed you guys earlier, this is that spot where I'm going to install the saddle. So I've got to get that cut out. Yeah, that's my hole. Uh, looks okay, not too bad. Might have been better if I had some tools that were actually made for doing that. Plus, this is kind of a tight spot. This is all I had to, to work with. Uh, what we do now is take the saddle, pull that backing off so the adhesive is exposed with the gasket, and mount it right there. And after that's on, I'll use some screws to screw this in, throw some tape over it, make sure the seal is good, and then we'll get the bypass connected up. So I've screwed my saddle on. Probably going to install, or uh, sorry, put some tape in between the connection, just for good measure. This is the 6 inch flexible duct that I got. That's what I'm going to be using to connect the bypass. I'm having trouble connecting the flexible duct. It, it worked fine over here. But I'm having trouble getting it connected to the apron layer. It, uh, it's either too small, or I'm sorry, the, the duct is too large to fit in here without doing some stretching and I just found an easier solution, which is to get one of these little, I don't even know what you'd call this thing, a uh, connector, sure, flex connector. So if you put this in here, you can see it fits nicely in there, I'll just run tape around that, and this allows me, let's see if I can do this, still allows me to open and close the apron layer, and this I know the flexible duct will fit around, so this just makes it a lot easier. Alright, I got this all taped up over here, this is kind of what it looks like, not bad. I mean, considering I've never touched this kind of stuff before, it's, I think it looks pretty good. This is my connection over here. Pretty solid, I, I would say. Looks pretty good. Oh, also, just one thing. Some of you guys may be wondering. The unit says it's reversible, and it is. Uh, it, it may not be evident when you're looking at it, but you can actually, from the inside, just push a little button and rotate this around, and you can flip the whole unit if you need the duct to come out that direction. So you just take the inner pad and you rotate it on the inside. It is reversible, like it says on the website. I was worried about that. Now I set up the 24-volt transformer that came with the April Air. What I did was took black wire coming out of the 120 side of the transformer, connected it into one of the uh, lines of my breaker, and I took the other side of the coil of the transformer and used a wire nut to run it back to the neutral over here, back in there, you can see, back in there. Um, so that's getting my 120, and this is transforming it down to 24, it's coming out a little bit higher, around 29, but that's not an issue, um, pretty sure in the April Air document it says it's okay as long as it's between... 24 and 30 or something like that. So, testing the voltage, you can see. 29. So, good on that end. We've got power. 
All right, all I have to do now is wire up the solenoid right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is wire that up and connect it to my nest. In order to do that, at least uh, for my setup with a heat pump with aux, did some research and I figured out you have to have, where did I set it? Oh, here it is. You have to have a relay. So what this will do is whenever the furnace is running, one side of the relay has a coil that will energize and close some contacts. Let's see if I can look at the diagram right here. So whenever the 120, 120 volts energizes, these contacts will close. So the 120 goes on these two right here, and these are the contacts. So whenever the furnace turns on, these contacts will close and supply this 24 volts to the humidifier. So I gotta wire that up, and then I'm gonna use one of these spare wires. Probably, doesn't really matter, probably this brown one. This is a spare wire that uh, goes up, goes through the walls, and over to the nest. So I have to connect that up to the nest. And that will, that should be it. That should be all I gotta do. Okay, I just wanted to show you guys the schematic. I can't take credit for this. I found this online on a forum. Uh, if you do some searching, if you look for um, humidifier with nest, you'll probably come across this. Um, a lot of people said it works for them, and after some research, I'm pretty sure it's going to work for me too. So I ordered this exact relay right here, the 6AZU2, and that's what this is. I showed you earlier. I, the only difference is I just had these little spade connectors on the end of it. So it's the same thing. But anyway, my nest looks pretty close to this. Um, the only thing that this does not show that mine has is the OB wire. Right here. I think that's just because mine's a heat pump, whereas the, that schematic isn't necessarily a heat pump. So, um, I have some spare wires jammed back in here. I'm going to pull one of them out and connect it up to the star terminal. As you can see right there. So, on the, in the furnace, I'm going to need to grab the other end of it and connect it to one of the sides of the coil, which we said was the red. So... You've got a position like this. Well, like this would be better. This is kind of exactly how this is shown right here. So these are the two sides of the coil. And these are the two sides of the contact. Let's check. One and three, two and four. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to connect that spare into the star terminal on the nest. And then over in the furnace, connect the other side right here. Grab my common and connect it to the other side of the coil. Then, it's pretty easy. I'm going to take this to one of the sides of the transformer. Shouldn't matter because it's AC. If you guys know anything about electricity, you'll know that AC shouldn't really matter. Now I'll take the other side of the transformer, run it over to the humidifier, and lastly, this goes over to the other side of the humidifier, this being the solenoid. So I'm going to get it all wired up, and I'll show you guys afterward. So I pulled my wire out a little bit further. I'm going to cut some of the sheathing off, uh, grab one of the spares that's buried in there. Can't really see it, but <clears throat> I'll show you. Okay, guys, I got everything hooked back up, and you can see I've got the star terminal added for the humidifier. As always, guys, um, I'm not sure what experience you have with electricity, but just make sure everything's turned off at your furnace and at the panel, uh, just to be safe. You know, never hurt. So here's the common connection. Right here we see this blue and brown. That is this point right here. So what I need to do is <clears throat> tap this into that and run the other end into the coil. Being right here. So let me do that real quick. Okay, so I got all my wiring done. Just kind of show you with the schematic here what do we got going on. So the 24 AC, the transformer, is right here. So this bottom connection goes to the solenoid, which I have right here. Kind of goes around, goes up and out over to the solenoid. The other side of the 24 goes to the contact on the relay, which you can see right here. Other side of the 24, contact on the relay. The other relay contact goes to the solenoid, which you can see right here. It's this one cable which goes out to the solenoid as well. Okay, so the common for the, uh, the coil side of the relay is right here. Goes over and ties in with the common right there. And the other side of the coil goes to the star terminal on the nest. You can see right here, it's this. Ties into that star terminal on my nest. So that's the wiring. And lastly, I put in the drain tube. It goes down. The drain. So it's all ready to fire up. So I just turned everything back on. Uh, nothing is leaking that I can tell, and that's great. One thing I'm surprised about uh, is this. This gets pretty hot. I guess I, I don't know. I just didn't expect that, but I don't know much about HVAC stuff. 
you know, this is where the hot air is normally, but I guess because it's so insulated, you don't, you don't realize how hot that air is. But you can feel this thing is pretty warm. So just be careful, because this could actually, this could probably burn you if you held your hand on there long enough. Um, I haven't configured the nest yet, but I'm going to go do that right now. So now I have to configure the humidifier. So type humidifier, activate. And I read that for heat pump systems, you want to use the option humidity plus heat. It doesn't, can't really make that out on here, but trust me, that's what it says. Humidity plus heat, fan, activate, we want that. And we should be good to go. All right, looks like we're done. I just put the nest in test mode, got everything running, and we have water, so that is perfect. Looks like we're good. One thing I did was close my valve about three quarters of the way and make it so there's only just a tiny bit of an opening to save on water because you don't need a full um, crazy drain rate, you just need a little bit coming out. So I'm going to tweak it until I get it so there's only just a tiny bit coming out. Okay, so I played with it some more and got it to where there's just the slightest of a trickle. Before, when I had the valve completely turned open, it was just tons of water pouring down. But this seems like the perfect amount because you know that if it's still dripping, that your, um, whatever you call it, thing on the inside, the, the, uh, the pad, you know it's still getting plenty of water because it's draining. So if you can make it so that you have just the smallest amount of drip, you're wasting the least amount of water. At least that's the way I see it. Um, so this looks about perfect.